Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be covering what is database, various types of database and database challenges. Next, I will explain what is DBMS and SQL. And at last, I will explain difference between in-memory and persistent database management systems. And also, I will explain difference between open source database and commercial database. Guys, I have uploaded a complete Python programming subject tutorials. I will provide a link in the description you can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. At first, I will explain what is database. A database is an organized collection of structured information or data, typically stored electronically in a computer system. That means, for example, let us consider database. My database name is mydatabase.db. Inside this database, there is one table. The table name is students and the students table contains name, Sai, Rahul, Raju and rule number 12, 13, 49, section ABA. A database is an organized collection of structured information. What is meaning of this organized collection? Organized collection means in database we will store data in organized format like all names in one place, rule numbers in one place and section in one place. This is meaning of organized collection. So a database is an organized collection of structured information. What is meaning of the structured information? That means in database we will store data in structured format like we will store data in tables. This table is structured format. So a database is an organized collection of structured information or data typically stored electronically in a computer system and we will store this database in computer. For example, if you consider this database, my database name is mydatabase.db and we will store this database in computer. So this is definition of database. A database is usually controlled by a database management system. This database management system is software and by using this software we can create database and we can perform various operations on database. For example, I want to create database with name my database and inside this database I want to insert students table. Inside students table, I want to give column names like name, rule number, section. And similarly, inside this column, I want to insert values like Sai, Rahul, Raju and so on. So in order to create database and in order to perform various operations on database, we need database management system software. By using this DBMS software, we can create database and as well as we can perform various operations on database. Data within the most common types of databases in operation today is typically modeled in rows and columns in a series of tables to make processing and data querying efficient. That means actually in database we can show data in various formats like we can show data in the form of tables, trees, documents and even graphs. But among all this many of the software companies prefer tables in order to store information because if you show data in tables format, that is in the form of rows and columns, because it is easy to access data, modify data and update and control data. So many of the software companies prefer to store data in the form of tables in database. Most databases use structured query language for writing and querying data. That means, for example, I want to create database with name my database. And inside this database, I want to insert one strange table. And inside this strange table, I want to give column names like name, rule number and section. And I want to insert some data like Sai, Rahul, Raju, rule number 12, 13, 14 and section ABA. I want to insert this data inside strange table. So just you need to open any DBMS software. And inside this DBMS software, you need to use structured query language in order to create database and in order to insert table inside database and in order to perform various operations on this database. For example, I want to create table. The table name is students. So just you need to write here SQL command that is create table. Here you need to give table name. Whenever you write here create table and table name that is students, it will create students table inside my database. In such a query language, whatever the code that we write, we call that code as queries. Next, I will explain various types of databases. There are various types of databases used for storing different varieties of data. In order to store different varieties of data, there are various types of databases available like centralized database, distributed database, relational database, cloud database, 
object oriented database and graph database i will explain each of them at first i will explain what is centralized database centralized database is a type of database that stores data at a centralized database system it comforts the users to access the stored data from different locations through several applications for example there is one software company the software company contains centralized database system now whatever the data that the software company contains all this data is stored in centralized database system for example there are three employees one employee is from hyderabad and one employee is from bangalore and one employee is from chennai now by using various applications all these three employees can access this data which is present in centralized database system these applications contain the authentication process to let users access data securely authentication is nothing but password for example if this user want to access data which is present in centralized database system then this user must enter password in his application only if this password is correct then he can access this data next one is distributed database unlike a centralized database system in distributed database systems data is distributed among different database systems of an organization this database systems are connected via communication links such links helps the end users to access data easily meaning of this is for example if you consider centralized database system in centralized database system we use only one single database the database is centralized database but whereas in distributed database each employee contains his own database and this database systems are connected via communication links in this example all these three databases are connected by using communication links such links helps the end users to access data easily so end user can access this data easily distributed database is classified into two types they are homogeneous distributed database and next one is heterogeneous distributed database homogeneous distributed database mean database systems which executes on the same operating system and uses same application and hardware for example if this user is using windows then this user also use windows and similarly this user also use windows so homogeneous distributed database mean database systems which executes on the same operating system and they also use same application and same hardware and next one is heterogeneous distributed database for example if all these three employees uses different operating systems different application and different hardware then we call it as heterogeneous distributed database next one is relational database data which is stored in the form of rows and columns together form a table is known as relational database a relational database uses structured query language for storing manipulating and as well as maintaining the data if you consider this example this is relational database because in this data is stored in the form of rows and columns that is data is stored in the form of tables so we call it as relational database and in relational database we use structured query language next one is cloud database cloud database is a type of database where data is stored in a virtual environment and exists over the cloud computing platform virtual environment is nothing but internet we will show data in internet and this cloud database provides various cloud computing services for accessing the database in order to access database this cloud database provides various cloud computing services like software as a service platform as a service and infrastructure as a service etc some of the examples of cloud platforms are amazon web services microsoft azure and google cloud sql next one is object oriented database for example if you consider python python is object oriented programming language object oriented database mean by using python program itself we can create database and we can perform various operations on database and last one is graph database data which is stored in the form of er is known as graph database what is meaning of er where er stands for entity relationship in this example student and btech are entities what is relationship between these entities studies so studies is relationship next i will explain database challenges first one is significant increases in data volume day by day we will update huge amount of data in database handling those huge amount of data is challenging task and next one is data consistency for example if we transfer database from one location to another location then whatever the data that is present in said database must be correct our data should not change if we transfer data from one location to another location this is meaning of data consistency 
consistency means correct. Data must be correct in database. And third one is data security. Nowadays, many hackers are using advanced techniques in order to hack data. So we need to use advanced security features in order to protect our database. So securing our data is another challenging task. And fourth one is data redundancy. Data redundancy means we should not store same data multiple number of times. For example, if you consider this table, in this table, I give a name si and rule number 15 twice. Though if we give same data multiple number of times, then database must store the data only once. This is meaning of data redundancy. And next one is data independency. Data independency mean, for example, if we move our database from one location to another location, then it should not affect data which is present in our database table. This is meaning of data independency. And last challenge is data administration. Managing the overall data is known as data administration. Every software company contains database administrator. Data administration work is done by this database administrator. These are various challenges in database. Next, I will explain what is DBMS. DBMS stands for Database Management System. This DBMS is software. In order to establish communication between user and database, we need DBMS software. By using this DBMS software, user can create database, user can insert tables inside database, and user can perform various operations on database. Inside this DBMS software, we need to use SQL, that is structured query language, in order to perform these operations. So this database management system software acts as interface between user and database. Some of the most common database management system softwares are MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle Database. These are examples of DBMS softwares. Next, I will explain what is SQL. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. Guys, normally in software companies, employees pronounce it as SQL, not SQL. So try to pronounce it as SQL. By using SQL, we can access and manipulate databases. The SQL is standard language for relational database management systems. That is, we use SQL in RDBMS. RDBMS is nothing but relational database, data which is stored in the form of tables. Simply by using SQL, we can communicate with relational database. By using SQL, we can execute queries and also we can retrieve data from database. We can insert records in database, we can update records, we can delete records and as well as we can create new database and also we can insert tables inside database. Guys, these are some of the most important SQL commands. And the first one is select command. By using select command, we can select data from a database. And next one is update command. By using update, we can update data in a database. And similarly, by using delete, we can delete data from a database. By using insert into command, we can insert new data into a database. And next one is create database. By using create database command, we can create new database. And by using alter database command, we can modify database. And similarly, by using create table, we can create table. And by using alter table, we can modify table. And whereas by using drop table command, we can delete table. By using create index command, we can create index. By using drop index command, we can delete an index. Guys, these are four basic SQL operations. And the first one is select. Select statement will select data from database tables. And next one is update. For example, this is my table. In this table, I want to change name Sai to name Nagendra. This is known as update operation. Update is nothing but updating data which is present in my table. Update statement updates existing data into database tables. And next one is insert. Insert statement inserts new data into database tables. For example, in this table, I want to add name Nagendra, rule number 15 and section C. Inserting new data in database table is known as update operation. And last one is delete. Delete statement deletes existing data from database tables. For example, this is data which is present in my table. Now I want to delete this entire row. I want to delete this SAI rule number 12 and section A. I want to delete this entire row. This is known as delete operation. Deleting data from database table is known as delete operation. These are four basic SQL operations. Next, I will explain difference between in-memory DBMS and persistent DBMS. In-memory is nothing but RAM. In this in-memory DBMS, data is stored in RAM. So once we shut down our system, all data will be lost. So we call it as temporary storage. And persistent means permanent. 
in persistent DBMS data is stored in hard disk. So even if we shut down our system, data will be present in our system. Whereas in in-memory DBMS, working with database is much faster. And whereas in persistent DBMS, working with database is slower. Its design is simple. Its design is complicated. This is simple structure of in-memory DBMS. By using application, we can connect to in-memory database. Next, you need to know what is hybrid DBMS. Hybrid DBMS is combination of both in-memory DBMS and persistent DBMS. Based on your requirement, you can store data either in RAM or in hard disk. Next, I will explain what is GDL, DML and DQL. Where DDL stands for Data Definition Language. DDL statements are used to define database schema. Schema is nothing but how data is organized in relational database is known as database schema. These are some of the DDL commands. They are create, alter, drop and truncate. Next, I will explain what is DML. DML stands for Data Manipulation Language. DML statements are used for manipulating or changing the data in database. The name itself says manipulation. That is nothing but modifying data in database. These are DML commands. They are insert, delete and update. By using these commands, we can modify data which is present in database. And next one is DQL. Where DQL stands for Data Query Language. Query is nothing but question. Whatever the code that we write by using structured query language, we call that code as query. DQL statement is used to query the database for retrieving required information. For example, if you want to access any information which is present in database, then you can use select command. Where this select is DQL command. Next, I will explain the difference between open source database and commercial database. Open source database is nothing but Database software which we can download with free of cost in internet is known as open source database. These open source databases are free to download. And these commercial databases are premium versions. So we cannot download them with free of cost in internet. They are paid versions. MySQL, PostgreSQL and MangoDB softwares are examples of open source database. Oracle and DB2 softwares are examples of commercial database softwares. Open source databases are free of cost. So they will provide limited technical support, whereas commercial databases are paid versions. So they will guarantee in technical support. And both open source database and commercial database will provide same security features. Both commercial and open source database have their own advantages and disadvantages. So when compared to commercial database, open source database is best because, because we can download this database with free of cost in internet. So this open source database is best.